welcome back ladies and gentlemen episode 55 of the non-league to legend save we are unemployed i haven't progressed the game any further since we got sacked with england uh, so that basically what i can do i'm just going to keep this recording and uh, obviously i'm not going to show it to you all but i'll edit out the bits that are you know nothing's happening and let you know you know when we're applying for jobs show you interviews and and let's let's see where we end up um but at the end of this episode we will have a job uh depending on how long it takes to get there we may play the first game in this episode uh but more than likely probably what we're gonna do is just get the job have a little look around the club and then the following episode we'll uh, we'll play a, a couple of games for them but i mean who knows maybe we won't even get a job because to be honest we should be embarrassed. We are Steve McLaren 2.0. We've had an absolute stinker with England. And uh, like I say, the only bit of real silver lining as such is the fact that we won the Confederations Cup. But I mean, it's a, it's a third choice compared to World Cup and, and the European Championships. So yeah, very, very disappointing uh, stage in our career. But I mean, as for jobs at the moment, there's 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 nothing we're not going down to the championship we'll be looking at at top nation top leagues in top nations um and i certainly won't be going international again doesn't suit me don't like it I'm not a big fan of the whole tactical familiarity and and things like that um we beat brazil 3-0 and and just couldn't beat anyone else really it was it was just it was a bit shocking very embarrassing so let's get this game continued and see what comes up. Like I say, we're in the 18th, 18th of November, so it's a good part of the season for jobs coming up. Um, as you saw tail end of last episode, there's no real jobs of note coming up. Uh, Plymouth, I've got my eye on, but I can't see me dropping down to League One somehow. Well, what was I saying a minute ago? Greece want measures. You've got no chance. I'm not being an international manager reject and we carry on searching well this is an interesting one Didier Deschamps appointed as the England coach I can't really blame England for going in that direction to be honest because uh, the last English manager they had Sean Measures made an absolute hash of it so why not go go down the foreign manager route uh, where was he in charge of before so the Olymp hmm the Marseille jobs available. They're third in the French top division. But for me, it doesn't excite me. Look at that. Just you can guarantee I mean that's fourth rather than third, but essentially you are just playing third or fourth fiddle to Monaco and Paris Saint Germain. I don't think you can really compete. Let's have a look at their key player. I mean, yeah, he's decent, but he's a left back, so he's not exactly going to have the uh, the biggest impact in games. So I'm not I'm not going to apply for that job. We're gonna we're gonna carry on the search. Right, Plymouth sack given. I'm slightly tempted to apply for the job. I think if this was a a normal save as opposed to a YouTube save, I might apply for this job and take it and and then try and take them all the way, but. They're in League One, middle of the road League One. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to apply for it. I don't think it's going to make for a great viewing. So we carry on with the job search. We're well. There we are. We're Boxing Day. So Merry Christmas, everyone. And not a lot has come up. The Everton job is insecure. I think that would be um, a good job to go for. Um, but nothing as of yet. So as soon as there is an update, I will let you know. One thing I just noticed. Didier Deschamps just taken over the England job, already very insecure, and they haven't played a single fixture. So I don't know what he's done there, but welcome to England, Didier. Right, the Swansea job has become available. It's it's not a job I necessarily want. I don't think I'm going to apply for it. I haven't been named in the running. I don't know if that's because I haven't got a chance at it or because I'm slightly above the level and I'm an unrealistic sort of expectation for, for them. Um, but, I mean, they've, they've been in the Premier League since 2011. Uh, highest finish, seventh, very good. 
Um, they've, they've got Ross Hughes, the young American player that we faced in the final. He's wanted by Man City at the minute as well, so that could be a bit of a money spinner. But I'm not overly interested, so I'm going to stay patient. I'm not going to apply for the Swansea job. Uh, I think if that Everton job become available, I'd probably apply for that. Um, but this is the, the state at the moment. In fact, the Everton job has dropped off the insecure list by the looks of it. And this is just me not being able to see them. But there's not really a lot going on, to be honest. I think we're probably looking at a job at the end of the season, as opposed to being able to find one through the middle of this season. Okay, the Everton job has just become available. They've sacked gigs. They're struggling in the Premier League. Their finances are just okay. As you can see, they're 16th, only won six games, lost 16. That is poor. They're conceding a lot of goals. I've had a little look through their squad, and there's a lot of older players here. Um, Pickford's 31, Shane Duffy's 33, 34, 34. Oh, I mean, it's not great. There's some half decent players here. And I think we could do something with him. What I'm going to do, I'm going to chuck in an application for the job. Um, whether I take it or not is another thing. I mean, we haven't been linked with it. I don't know, again, if that's the same thing, whether we generally haven't got a chance or is it that they don't, they don't think they have a chance of getting me? I'm not 100% sure where we really stand in the football and world, to be completely honest. Um, but we've chucked in an application. We're not going to de declare interest. I'm sure we'll get an interview. I'm sure of it. Um, but we'll see what they say in the interview as to, you know, maybe how much money there is to spend and things like that, what they expect from us. It could be that they're just massively underperforming this year. Um, but, I mean, other than that, I think there's better jobs out there. I think we can get better jobs. They've still got a, a high uh, reputation rating. I just don't know. There's not a great deal of, of anything else other than if I take the risk of waiting until the end of the season. Um, but let, let's see how we get on with this, see if we get the interview. Okay, Everton have offered a job interview. We're going to attend. We're not going to hang about too much in this because they're all pretty much the same. Why have you felt acceptable to apply for a number of jobs? I admit I lack professionalism, but that's something... Well, I'm not going to say that just in case I feel like I need to get out. Um... I'll not let anything get in the way of my ambition to further my career prospects. Why not? I don't know if I'm kind of half got the mindset of sabotage in this interview, but I don't really know. Ugh, media controversy, whatever. Very much the exception rather than the rule. There we go. Same questions again. Uh, I can promise you that I would cultivate a healthy dressing room atmosphere. Um... My intention to commit to a long and successful career with this club, why not? Perform well below expectations, suffered a drop from the middle of the season. Could you get the team back on track? I'm a motivator. Yeah, how would you feel about working with our director of football? Yeah, why not? Understand the importance of having the right backroom staff. Don't want to make any changes. If hired, you would be expected to develop players from the clubs you've set up. Is that something? Yeah, I'll be willing to do that. Any philosophies? No. No expectations. Okay, so they're not really going to tell me about anything um, finance-wise. Um, maximum wage allowed, £60,000 a week. That's going to be a little bit difficult. Wage bills at £2 million a week. Okay. No, no request to propose. Lovely. Right, that's the interview done. I must admit... If they offer it to me, I'm kind of thinking of turning it down, to be honest, just because I've had a little bit of a look at the club. But let's let's have a look how we get on. And there is actually a plan for a consortium to take over Everton, um, possibly involving a former footballer. That's generally not a good sign for having money to spend. I don't know if uh, if this guy, Farad Mashiri, has got loads of money or, or whatever, but he clearly wants out maybe I don't know um, but it's something to think about but it's still I'm still not thrilled about taking over Everton to be completely honest 
And then there we go. I kind of thought they were going to offer it to me. I think we're a little bit above Everton, to be honest. They've they've been dropping down in money. A transfer budget, 1.74 million. Wage budget, 2.1 million. I don't want the job. I don't want it. Ah, do you know what? I think I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to turn it down. I'm going to delay it just for now, just for the sake of it, um, just in case anything comes up in the meantime. But yeah, I'm not keen on taking this Everton job. It looked good from the outset, but they've got a lot of aging players and with no money to replace them with, we could just be walking into a club where we just haven't got anything there that would help us succeed. And the consortium complete the Everton takeover. A consortium led by Cambridge-based investor Paul Barry has successfully completed a takeover of Everton, replacing former owner Farad Mashiri. Barry revealed he was delighted by the deal and indicated that he wanted to make a difference for the fans at Goodison Park. Barry had previously had spells with Seattle Sounders and Cambridge United. Uh, doesn't really say anything about money. Obviously, when they... Um, when they offer me the job again in a week's time, I'll have a look, see if anything's changed money-wise. But it seems a bit strange that they'd they'd hire a manager sort of before the board took over, really. You'd think that'd be something the new board would get involved in. But let's see if anything's changed. Right, the week is up. The offer's here again. And nothing's changed wage budget, transfer budget-wise. Um, I'm just not thrilled about taking it. We're at the 28th of March. So the season's nearly over. So I think, personally, I could take a bit of a risk and leave it to the end of the season to get a job. It would give me less time at the start of the following season to get my transfer targets and get everything set. But I think we can get a better job than Everton. I really do. I might regret walking away from this, but we're going to walk away. The Everton board won't be happy with me. Let's crack on to the end of the season and hopefully there's going to be a bit of a transfer manager merry-go-round anyway and hopefully we can get ourselves a better job. And Paolo Fonseca has taken the Everton job and he's actually managed there before which is a little bit strange just because of the simple fact that he was sacked for underperforming. He went to PSG, left there to go to Hull, resigned to go to France sacked to go to Borussia Mönchengladbach and then sacked again and back to Everton. It's um, maybe a little bit of a, a weird appointment maybe. Right, the season's over. Premier League has finished and I think in terms of a top six job, they've all just about done enough to keep their jobs to be completely honest. So probably not going to be too much there. Bournemouth, Redden and Wolves relegated. Um, but looking at the jobs that have come up, it's not looking too fruitful, to be honest. Bournemouth just been relegated. Bill Bow, I believe they're only allowed to buy players from the, is it the Basque region or something? So really limited with transfers there. Uh, Villarreal, don't fancy it. I find the Spanish league really boring, as do I the Italian league. So for me, it would probably be somewhere along the lines of Germany or the Premier League. Um... But, I mean, the season's only just finished, so I should imagine. I mean, Bayern finished second. Allegri could easily lose his job at Bayern. Um, Juventus finished third. They could easily become available. Um, but I don't know. So we're going to push on a little bit and hopefully a few better jobs become available because it's, uh, it's slim pickings at the minute. Right, there's been very, very little jobs available in this summer. Um... We had Schalke, I think AC Milan, a few teams like that, but they didn't really excite me. And I knew the World Cup was coming up because A, we didn't qualify for it as England manager. Um, so hopefully some of these sackings that have gone on, namely France, Portugal, Argentina, Brazil, hopefully they attract some big managers to them jobs and then we get some other jobs become available. But time will tell and um, it's looking likely that if this doesn't work we're going to be waiting until sort of November a little bit into the new season until we get a new job but it, it hasn't quite gone to plan yet and um, what I'm kind of hoping is the Southampton job comes up 
um because i would definitely jump at a chance to go back there and looks like our plan has backfired there's i mean the nice job and the nac job is available all of those uh, national jobs were taken by managers that just weren't managing at, at big clubs it's uh it's unfortunate so we're gonna have to be patient and uh, i'll come back to you as soon as we've got any kind of opportunity that we actually want okay we've just read this tycoon i southampton someone with loads of money wants to come in and invest in the club and it's only making me want my job back at southampton even more really regret leaving there and you never know maybe maybe we can work our way back there but it looks like the season's going to start without us um having a job basically so i should imagine we're going to be out of work till november at least um we've got 11 days until the the premier league campaign kicks off no jobs are going to become available now we've got the halifax job probably about my level to be honest uh juventus job still insecure don't necessarily fancy it though to be honest and the croatia job other than that no jobs are going to come available so um i think we're going to push on a couple of months and see what comes up right here we go 16th of january we've had to wait until something of note came up and the arsenal manager has been sacked we're going to apply for it we, this is only the second job that we've applied for since being sacked by england uh we're not in the running here some big names being linked i mean kiko sanchez flores he's the spain manager so maybe he won't leave there i'm not sure he's got a better reputation than us uh, carlo angelotti surely he won't leave man city um arsenal struggling down in 13th in the premier league and had a notable drop off finishing low as low as eighth in 2020-21 back up to fifth fifth sixth fourth fifth so you know that they're always in the conversation regarding european football um but this would be a good job and it's it's a the team that i support in in real life um and it's a job that i often get i find arsenal and man city quite easy to get the jobs but this guy Nuno Espirito Santo always beats me to any job I want it doesn't matter what it is he always seems to get the job ahead of me I think has even happened in this save so we've applied for it um in terms of I don't know whether to declare my interest I'm going to declare interest why not in terms of uh, job security I mean the AC Milan job came up again a couple of German jobs things like that but but nothing really great. I mean, Liverpool insecure. That's a job that I would like. But let's let's see what happens regarding this Arsenal job, and uh, and see if we can get an interview. So Measures wants Arsenal job. Um, yeah, nothing else new there. There's been a lot of speculation this week linking you with the vacant Arsenal post. Are you interested in the job? Passionate. I think any manager worth his salt would be interested. It's a job of fantastic stature and opportunity. So there we go, and uh, we'll come back, hopefully, with an interview for the Arsenal job. Right, so in the news, not that it really counts for any, anything, but Measures wants Arsenal job. Ancelotti denies Arsenal interest. Sanchez Flores coy on Arsenal talk, so that's a maybe. And Espirito Santo not interested. Doesn't necessarily mean anything, but um, fingers crossed that means that pushes us up the list a little bit and let's have a little look i don't think we're going to be favorites for the job by any stretch and it's not even there where are you kiko sanchez flores is now favorite i'd like to i'd quite like to be able to expand that list and maybe give you a a bigger list of odds on on what managers are in the running rather than just the top three but I, do, I don't think I'll get this Arsenal job, which would be a shame, but not the end of the world. Right, Arsenal fans consider Measure's leading candidate, which is a good sign, but I think this has happened to me a couple, two or three times in this save, where they've pinpointed me as, as being a leading candidate and, and I haven't been given the job. So I don't think it really stands for a lot, but it's um, it's a good sign anyway. Okay, here we go. Arsenal offer job interview. Happy with that. What I'm a little bit worried about before we go into this interview is 
they're so far off the pace for European football is that they're going to want Europe or that I might have to promise them Europe to get the job and it's going to be a massive task to actually get European football. Uh, so let's get down to it. Having never managed a club of our stature and reputation, are you able to make a convincing case as to why that should be overlooked and you should be hired? Okay, right. Um... I've been waiting for the right opportunity to step up to the big time and I sincerely hope that I get the chance to work here. I spent the majority of career building up considerable experience with smaller clubs in preparation. Eh, I'm going to go with that one. Waiting for the right opportunity to step up to the big time. You've been unemployed for a fairly long time now. Why haven't you returned to management yet? I've been waiting for the right opportunity and more importantly the right club. Yep. I think that's going to be the one. Why have you felt except to apply for a number of jobs whilst employed by another team throughout your career? Uh, I admit I lack professionalism in doing that, but I've decided never to do it again. You've previously been embroiled in meat oh, fuck, here we go. Uh, Cult of a strong dressing room atmosphere. Very much the exception rather than the rule. Oh, exception rather than the rule. We want to ensure the dressing room atmosphere is much better than it was under our previous manager. Can you assure us that there will be no problems were we to hire you? I'm extremely confident of being able to cultivate a strong atmosphere without any problems whatsoever. I can promise you that I would cultivate a healthy dressing room here. We'll go for the top one. Club is looking to hire a manager comfortable working with limited resources, really? Ah, that's annoying. I know I'll be able to look after the club's finances if given the job. But the club has been underperforming for far too long. Are you the right person to turn things around? around? I'm a motivator. I always adopt a positive attitude and it's infectious. In the dressing room, a happy squad is a winning squad. Underestimate the... Yeah. Do I want to bring anyone in? I don't wish to propose any changes. Would you be willing to develop youth players? Yes. No philosophies top half finish i mean yeah definitely but let's see how far we are off europe i mean technically actually we're only six points off europe i could tell them that we're going to get european cup hmm it gives me a better chance to get in the job basically if i say that i think we can finish in the europa league as opposed to just a top half finish or i could play and just say yeah i can meet the expectations of a top half finish and it will just lessen the pressure on my shoulders and then we can push next season but i kind of want this job you see so i don't it's a little bit i don't know what to say i mean euro cup is is definitely achievable it's achievable i mean you've got to think that we can maybe push southampton out possibly Liverpool I mean West Ham are in Europe so that's that's a tough season for them Everton up in eight foot we turned that job down hmm I'm just gonna say a top half finish proposed transfer budget of 9.25 million it's realistic budget of 3.5 million it's yeah realistic help me attract the quality of players required no requests that concludes this interview Whew, right okay well i suppose all we're waiting on now is just an answer but i still don't think i'll get offered this job i really don't we'll check now just to see if any odds have changed regarding an interview um things like that for some reason i thought that was a job offer um Look at that. Six to one favourite for the job now. That's big. That is big. I, do, I want this job. I really do. Uh, what was that about Benitez? Benitez could leave, leave Liverpool. Okay, so the Liverpool Chiefs, they're more worried that they're going to lose him as opposed to they don't want to renew his contract. I think he'll probably stay there, to be honest. But let's uh, let's crack on and let's see if we get this Arsenal job. Fingers crossed. Well, would you look at that? Arsenal approach measures. It looks like we're back in the big time, boys. 
it's a step up from Southampton, even though I think Southampton are probably the, the almost a better choice right now, just because they've um, they're on the up as opposed to Arsenal are on, on the down. Um, but they've offered me a two-year contract to start immediately, forty-nine and a half grand a week. Winning the Euro Cup, a bonus of two hundred and five grand. Winning the FA Cup, a bonus of two hundred and five grand, and a relegation wage drop of thirty-five percent. So if we get relegated, I'll drop fifty percent. And I want 54 grand a week. I want 275 grand if we win the Euro League or Europa League. And if we win the FA Cup, I want 250 grand. Let's see what they say. They're happy. I think that made all the difference for some reason. That clause there, they're, they're thinking, oh, lovely, yeah, we'll cut his wages in half. But come on, we're not going to get relegated, are we? Um, so yeah i mean happy days we are the arsenal manager look at that training facilities youth facilities um i'm i'm excited let's finalize that we are now officially the arsenal manager come on so we take over 11th in the league we're gonna we're gonna go through a couple of little bits i'm not gonna bore you with too much um We'll attend this meeting, but I won't. You you know what goes on at these meetings, so I'll just skip through this. All right, looks like we've got a lot of players that want to leave. That's probably down to the fact that well, they want. Yeah, it tells you here they want continental football. Um, Firmino wants to move for a new challenge. Don't worry, son, you'll be leaving. And wants first team football. Nigel McCourt. I should imagine he'll probably get it under me. To be completely honest, he um, he's young. He's English. Who's Steve Parker? Well, he was never in my England side. Maybe McCourt won't get first team football because this guy looks, he looks handy. Social feed, yeah, accept always. Choose Arsenal captain. Ewobi, are you having a laugh? He's not exactly captain material, is he? Andre Anderson, who's this guy? teamwork leadership he's a center half he's brazilian i mean can he can he speak the, the lingo properly fluent english i'm sorry andre anderson is my captain and ollie kersey's a right back not sure about vice captain why not let's give it to ollie kersey Double check, he is our best right back. Yeah, he is. So he's going to be playing a lot. Why not? Uh, do we warn Ayer about losing captaincy? It might upset him, but I mean, nah, who cares? New manager, new regime, new change. Get used to it. Right, so they have not won the Premier League since 2004. Cup winners' cup. The Euro Cup in 2019. FA Cup in 2017. So they haven't really won a lot since the start of this save. Um, so we've got a good chance to come in and um, really make a change at Arsenal. We'll have a little look at our team. Have a little look. Right, squad. In fact, we'll do it through. I'm going to check our under 23s and under 18s first. So, in terms of anyone that's near first team ready, we've got Christian Uze. He's a 16-year-old target man. Looks like he could be something. Um, don't really use target men too much, but played in the Carabao Cup this season. Got an assist, but he'll stay where he is for now. Other than that, no real standout youngsters in there. In the reserves, who's this guy? Macon, 29 years old. I mean, this guy is just begging to leave the club in my eyes. So let's transfer list him 28.5 million. We'll take 24 for him, definitely. Um, potential wise, I mean, we've got, a f I'm going to look at sort of these guys here as, as the ones that have got real potential. Claudio, already three star which is pretty good. 
he looks okay. Good in the right places. Um, crossing's poor. Dribbling's not great. I mean, essentially, he's another Hector Bellerin, really. Pretty quick. Good concentration, determination. Mm, yeah, I can see why they've loaned him out. Um, where are we? Alfie McGee. Looks like could be a good player. Hasn't got too much about him. His mentals aren't fantastic. Technicals aren't great either, but he can cross a ball. Good technique, good acceleration, pace, good stamina. So, yeah, decent, decent mould for a winger. Um, Dan Harrington, advanced playmaker. This guy looks like he could be good. He's on loan at Newcastle at the moment. Doing pretty well in the in the championship by all accounts. He's still only 21, but I think he could uh, he could potentially be a big player for us. Bob Smith, look, what a name. Bob Smith on loan at Bristol City. Two star current, five star potential. I think he could probably maybe do a job in the future. You don't know, but nothing really stands out there as in people that need to be brought into the the first team as such. Um, let's just check this make on against everyone else. Yeah, we've got many, many better players than him. So he'll stay where he is. And let's have a little look at the squad we've got now. I'm going to go through the team report screen. Squad depth, right? All positions, all current ability players, best role. Okay. Right, Alban Lafont, good French goalkeeper. He's, I've never, don't, don't think I've ever signed him, but always heard of him and um, in other saves. Pretty happy with him there. Conceded 28 in 24 games, nine clean sheets. I think he can be a, a very good goalkeeper for us. We'll certainly uh, keep him. Centre half. It's nice that we've got a few options there. I mean, what is a three-star player for us? Three-star player is a good player for Premier Division sides. So really, we, we, we want to be looking at sort of four-star players here, really, to be completely honest. And... Um, yeah, we might be lacking a little bit in a few areas. So, Pierre Len Lennartz, Lennartz um, looks a decent player. 22 years old, which you can't be too upset about. Nice young player. 135 grand a week already. Happy with him. And the man we made captain, Andre Anderson. Three star, even though he was three and a half star here which is a little bit strange he's he, he looks he looks good enough he does look good enough so relatively happy with that we've seen ollie kersley um and he played for us for england as well so happy day there um steve parker nigel mccourt two great options at left back it's very rare to come to a club and have two really good left back options defensive midfielder i mean we'll have a little look but wendell looks like he's better at center mid and Asia will probably be filling in at centre-half. Who's this guy? Francisco Saldanha. <sighs> Looks okay. Back up. 25, so we've got £43 million he's worth. So um, I think we can do something with this Arsenal squad. So I'm probably not going to play a defensive midfielder. Uh, let's have a look at Wendell in the middle here. Yeah, he looks tidy. He looks tidy. He's 29. So he might not be at the club for too much longer. I don't like older players. Um, Lennartz is our centre-back. Danny Caballos, who we tried to sign for Southampton and Arsenal pinched him from under our nose. He can probably st he can probably still do a job in, in the middle for now. Um, this guy I, I remember seeing is really highly rated. The, the, the star ratings are not really matching up everywhere, but four star on here. He looks like our best player in the middle of the park for me. 30 years old, though, um, but that that's not too old. And only on 130 grand a week. Happy days. It looks like he came from Juventus. He did 33 million pound. Uh, in terms of attacking midfielders, Geraldes, Francisco Geraldes, 31 years old. See, we're going to be we're going to be moving a few players on, I think, and um, and investing in some younger players, I think, for the future. 
but he looks he looks good he can do a job good composure good decisions first touch pass and technique vision teamwork i think he can be a really good player for us we've got him in his uh almost his best years probably um let's have a look anyone else alex awobi can do a job in there oh, i'm not a big awobi fan but that's real life this is a computer game so we won't judge him on real life i think wingers are a slight problem for us but maybe to the level that we're gonna need to use them i mean thompson he's our best striker so he, he plays up top regardless as the advanced forward possibly a complete forward we'll see but yeah thompson who we had at england he was uh, he was very good at that level and i think we're going to get a lot of goals out of him i certainly hope we will anyway seven in 22 appearances in the premier league so far that is not good enough and um i think we'll be able to get him scoring again moves into channels places shots likes to round the keeper plays one twos so about moving into channels might have to get rid of that but happy with him but i'm not happy with what we've got in behind him Firmino, 35 years old i mean come on now transfer listed let's get rid of him i'm sure he's on big money as well 210 grand a week i think they must be drunk and to me i've never thought Firmino was a striker anyway he's more someone in one of these three roles in in my opinion jonathan caleri i think he came from real madrid he did um i think he can do a job as a backup he's transfer listed i kind of agree with that so we're probably going to be looking at buying a striker at some point because if thompson is out we're struggling who's this bogunovic stefan bogunovic He's not really a striker, so we're not going to consider him as one. Um, Pasta, Juan Ramon Pastor. Uh, I think this looks like the kind of player we're after here. So this guy will, will definitely be playing first team football as my right winger. 100% on the left. I mean, it's looking like it's probably going to be a Wobi. I like playing an inside forward. I, at 30 years old he's still got the legs and the fitness and although he's he's able but he's not the best so i should imagine we'll probably look to to probably replace him at some well not replace him but just get someone better in so i'm relatively happy with um with the squad it, it could have been a lot worse um so yeah happy days now i've got no idea how long this this episode has run for but essentially i'm not going to play a game we've got a game in sort of a week's time against west brom at home uh, what i shall do is get all of this sorted get my tactics sorted and have a little scout get just get everything ready and then in the next episode we will go through um anything that i missed and and also play that first but we'll pro probably play two games so it will be oh, let me go into schedule it's a lot easier we'll play west brom and everton um we're not overly fussed about the euro cup this year so i'm i don't necessarily think i need to bring it to you but um we'll play west brom and everton in the next episode but to be honest i'm just happy that i got a job again and it's a it's a step up it's a move in a positive direction so happy days and you know not all is dead i think we can still get europe if we do um push far in the euro cup you know you never know we maybe even champions league football next season let's see who we've got in here anyone that we need to really worry about let's make sure none of your barcelonas and people like that are in there i mean tottenham ac milan that's that's a winnable competition this year to be completely honest not that i'm pinning all my hopes on it but it's a winnable competition so uh, so thank you very much for watching and i will catch you in the next episode where we will play west brom and everton in our first two games as arsenal manager